Hey guys, welcome back. Patrick here. Can you believe this market? Every day is throwing us curveballs, so it's not for the faint of heart. Especially yesterday was such a big down day. Literally, all of the growth stocks were down. But when I woke up and I looked at the futures, and it seemed like everything was going to crash today, I mean, I figured, wow, it's going to be another tough day in the market. But now, I looked through a lot of indicators, and again, I still can't change my theory. I still feel like everything in the market shows a lot of strength and maybe we're reaching that point now where people are capsulating and we're about to rebound. What makes me say that is that this morning, right, a lot of these stocks hit their support and instead of going straight through the support and then it's like free fall after that, what happened is they just bounced off of it, right? And that is a very, very positive sign. Look through a few of the indicators, which I'm going to show you in a minute, and you're going to see that historically, a lot of these indicators are showing strength. And right? so even though it feels very dreary right now, it feels like we're about to lose all of our money. Usually that's a time when you want to be buying, right? Not necessarily all at once. You always have to be careful. Often you need to keep money in case you have to dollar cost average down. But I'm finding a lot of opportunities right now, way more than I have money, unfortunately. But let's get into it. I'll show you a couple of things. I hope you learn something and it helps you. All right, guys, there is a fundamental truth in the market that people that buy options are losers. Now, I'm not trying to insult you if you're an options buyer. It is just 90% of people that buy options actually lose money, right? Versus people that sell options. So keep that in mind throughout the video. You're going to see why I'm mentioning it. It is very relevant to what I'll talk about in a minute. But first, let's take a quick look at the NASDAQ. It's only down 12 points today, down 0.09%. That's not a big deal. It is mostly the Dow that lost today and all the stocks that have been doing really well before uh, did poorly today versus all the stocks that usually crashed now today they did at least okay I mean they not they didn't all gain but at least they didn't lose too much and that's why this market is so difficult to understand and like analyze that on a dime it just flips 180 degrees so it's very difficult to know where to go from here and this morning, I mean, it was falling off a cliff, but thankfully it actually clawed its way back. Now, before I get into options, I want us to talk about AMD. And again, it all ties in together. Just give me a minute, right? So AMD, I mentioned before that the support is at 74 bucks. And we know that the support is fairly strong for this company because it hit it here, here, and here. So this morning, when I saw that the futures were going under 74, that was not a great sign, right? Uh, that's not what you want to see because then it means that the support that is very strong might be breaking. And then after that, I mean, look at how the next big support is going to be 50 bucks, right? So uh, for me talking about this stock, that's not exactly what I want for the viewers. Uh, obviously, when I talk about a stock, I want it to like skyrocket and then it makes me look good and hopefully a lot of the viewers make money from it. So when it was under 74, I didn't really like that, but thankfully it actually rebounded. It ended the day green, right? That was pretty good surprise, 76.83. So, so far so good. We'll have to see what happens the rest of the week, right? If it can continue in that uptrend and go back to 80, we're going to be in a pretty good spot. If it falls under 60, uh, 74, then it's going to be a very, very bad sign. And on that point, I mean, I would personally put a, uh, a stop loss at, let's say, 73 bucks and just get out of it if it goes under 74, all right? So yesterday night I was looking at the options for this company and that's why I noticed all of these indicators that I'll tell you about. So I was looking through it and I, saw, I figured, wow, there's a lot of put options on this company. And we know that the market has been really shorting a lot of these growth stocks, even the ones that have been doing really well, like this one, I showed you the earnings, they've been crushing them, they have a lot of growth planned for the next year. And still, even for 2022, a lot of put options on this company, like very, very uh, um, uh, lopsided towards the put options. So I looked into it a little bit deeper, I looked at other companies and I saw the same thing. And CBOE, you can see basically on a day-to-day -day basis, the volume and open interest, and especially the put to call ratio. So not a lot of people know this, but you'll see it is a very, very important indicator. So the put to call uh, ratio is literally like very simple, right? How many calls are there? How many puts are there? And then they do the ratio and on a day to day basis, you're going to see the differences. Now we know that over the past few months, 
there has been a lot of shorting in the market, right? And you can clearly see it right here. Look at how the puts to call ratio has been increasing. January is when we were all doing so well, right? The market was at the highest. Uh, we were making money and over fist. The ratio was at 0 0.34. Now in May or May 10th, yeah, so this is like one day late, it is now at 0 0.59. Meaning, if you look at like on a day-to-day -day basis, look at how over the past few weeks, it has really accelerated very, very rapidly the amount of puts that are bought and sold versus the amount of calls. So the market is very, very bearish right now, most likely because you have all of these hedge funds that are shorting the market and making a lot of money right now. So why would they suddenly stop like being short when it's working right now and go long. They're only going to do that when the market stops dropping. But here's why this is actually not that bad for us. Usually this ratio is kind of like, this is why I was saying that people that buy options usually end up losing their money. When the ratios go to the extremes, usually it signals that we're at a point where there's going to be a reversal. I mean, it almost always happens that way. When the herd does something, usually the opposite happens. It's just the way the market goes. I mean, I can't explain why. It's just the way it is. Look at March 12th, right? This is peak fear about the pandemic in 2020. Look at how the ratio of puts to call went to 1.28 everyone was buying calls and paying really really high premiums right what happened after them after that all those uh puts that they bought they expired mostly worthless because the market got into such a huge bull run like we haven't seen in a very long time meanwhile in january as we were showing this was when the market was at its peak and since then it's been falling constantly and no one wanted to buy puts, right? So every time you reach those extremes, usually there's a reversal. And that's why right now, as it keeps going up and up and up, we're not necessarily at the same levels that we were here, right? There's still maybe a long ways to go, but the higher this ratio goes, it means that the herd is all going in one direction. Well, at some point, they're the ones that are gonna fall off a cliff, right? The trend is going to reverse and all of a sudden, you know, you're going to see all of them go long and then the all the stocks are going to keep going up and skyrocketing in prices. Right? It's just a matter of reaching that critical level where everyone's going to change direction. So you see it, the same thing, right? In a previous video, we saw how in 2018 with the interest rate scare and everything, people thought that the market was going to fall. So everyone started buying puts. And look at what happened in 2019. It was a pretty decent year uh, until the pandemic hit. So you can scale this back up to the actual um, uh, tech bubble in 2000s. These ratios, you can see it constantly when it reached the peak. After that, uh, the market actually recovers. And then when it reaches the bottom, the market actually crashes so constantly. So that's the first indicator I wanted to show you. Look at how right now it is going towards the puts. We're still at a level that is fairly historically average, but as they keep shorting the market, this is going to go up and up and up. And when you reach like something a little bit above this, let's say 80, that seems to be the cutoff point. I mean, that's a point where the market's probably going to reverse. All right, guys, next up, we've got the VIX, which is a fear indicator. The reason we call it that is because it tracks volatility. And usually volatility is caused by fear in the market. I mean, every time the market has jitters, then the, spike, uh, the VIX tends to spike. You can look at the 20 year chart. You're going to see this, right? This is a five year. 2018, the rate scares, VIX spikes. Pandemic, VIX spikes. November election, VIX spikes. All right, so it is a constant thing. And then if you notice, it has been downtrending. Uh, look at how in early April, it was very low, almost the 2019 levels. Now, why is that? I mean, it makes very little sense, right? I don't know about you, but me being a SPAC investor and a growth stock investor, my fear level is pretty high in that period. But when you look at the market as a whole, you guys know that they kept making new highs with the S&P 500, the NASDAQ even, and the Dow Jones. So the market as a whole was not in a bad spot, right? It's just our stocks that were doing really poorly.
So now, though, if you zoom in, you're going to see that it is actually spiking back above 20, right? So when you combine the VIX that's starting to go back up, again, we'll have to keep monitoring, right? If it goes back to 30 or something, right? But we're starting to see that it went from 16 to 21 in a week, right? That's significant in my opinion. So we have the VIX that's going up. We have people buying much more puts than they were before, hedging their position, uh, shorting the market. When you combine all of that information, you're starting to see that, yeah, maybe that huge bull run that we've had in the past year, even with recovery plays now that kind of took over from the SPACs and the growth stocks, well, now those two may start to slow down and even start to retrace. A lot of them have been at 52 weeks high or all time highs. So if, if you look, uh, I looked earlier, I'm not going to show all of them, but today all the stocks that were down were stocks that have been really performing well over the past three months. Companies like Home Depot that have been really crushing it. Today was down a couple percentage points, right? So all those companies that were doing really well, today they kind of went backwards. So that's why I'm saying that, yeah, it is very possible that we are going to see that 10, 20% down uh, uh, retracement in the market. Now, how long is this going to last? I have no idea. No one can really tell you that, right? We're just going to be tracking these indicators and we're going to see that trend forming over the next few weeks, over the next few months. Like who knows how long it's going to last. Now, the reason why I keep saying that this is just noise because this is the feelings that people have about the stock market. It has nothing to do with the strength of these companies. Right now, Facebook is going down, right? It peaked at 3.30 after they announced their earnings, which were phenomenal, like number one. And now today it actually hit 300. Uh, for a brief second, I think it went under 300, right? And in previous videos, I said, Hey, if Facebook goes under 300, again, it's going to be pretty interesting, right? So if all these companies start to retrace 10, 20%, even though they're really strong right now, Apple is doing really well. Uh, AMD is not really the same as Fang, of course, but AMD, I feel, is in a very good spot right now. Apple, would you be scared owning these companies for the next five years? That's why I see it as an opportunity. Like I don't really care about the, the market sentiment and people's feelings about the market and everything. Yes, it's going to have an impact in the short term, right? But that's why it creates a huge buying opportunity. I keep mentioning it and I will keep mentioning it until people really start to understand it and st stop being as fearful. I mean, I, I can't blame people, right? When you see the market down every day, yes, it really hurts. But this is a different type of crisis than we had in 2020. This is just noise. This is just like market indicators and the algos are trading it and the people are taking, the hedge funds are taking profits and shorting the market. That has nothing to do with the strength of these companies. So just keep that in mind. Like scrape the bottom of your drawers for quarters. Like try to get as much money as you can so that when you see these opportunities, let's say that Facebook goes to 250, right? Uh, then you're going to want to be buying these stocks, right? So there's absolutely no problem there if you have a five-year time horizon, which I do on a lot of them. So I hope you enjoyed the video. I hope you learned a little bit. Uh, a little bit. Right? Keep paying attention to the puts-to-call ratio. That one's going to be very big. And I'll see you guys in the next one.